In this video, we're going to take a look at painting dirt and stitching. So let's make sure for the texture set list, we have the base selected. And then here in the layer stack, I'm going to create a new layer at the top of the stack. To do that, I will click the add layer button. Here you can see this new layer has been created. I'm going to double click and just name this dirt. The layer that I've created is a paintable layer. You can see that here through the properties. I have properties for my paint stroke as well as a material. Let's come over here to the assets and I'm going to choose the brush. Here you'll notice that we have a host of brushes that we can use in our projects. Any of the brushes that have a Photoshop icon represent ABR brushes and you can import ABR brushes directly into Substance Painter. Now in this case, I'm going to come over to my search and I'm just going to filter for dirt brushes and here I'm going to use this dirt to brush. Now these brushes represent a preset. So if I come over here to the properties paint, I'm going to select the brush properties tab and here you can see that I have various parameters for controlling my brush. Now take a look at what happens when I actually click on this dirt to brush preset. You can see here that the brush settings are now set based on what is saved within this preset. Here I have an icon which lets me see what the brush is going to look like. I can even test out my stroke here in this window. You also have a material that's associated with this brush. With every brush, you will have a material that you need to set. So here we'll come over to the material tab and here's where I can set the surface parameters for my material. Things like color, metalness, and roughness. For dirt, I'm only going to be using my color and my rough information. So I can click to turn off these other channels that I'm not going to be needing. Now for the color, let's click the color swatch and I'm going to set a color value. So I'm going to use something like a color value like this. Now for the roughness, I'm going to increase this roughness amount by just simply dragging the slider to the right. So now that my brush and my material is set, I can begin to paint here in my 3D view. I'm going to focus on the skate wheel and then I'll start to just paint and here you can see that I'm actually painting directly on the object. I can hit Control Z to undo. Now I can also come over here to my history button. So we'll click history and this is going to show us a complete history of everything that we're doing. So if you need to step back through a few strokes, you can do that. And this is very similar to the history settings in Photoshop. So I'll close my history and now let's start to take a look at ways we can work with the brush tool. Now you'll notice here at the top of the 3D view, we have this toolbar and this is just a quick access to the parameters here that I can access at the top of the view instead of having to jump back over here to my properties tool. So here you can see we have things like size, flow, opacity, spacing, and so on. Now also notice here on the far left, we have this icon indicator, which lets me choose how I want to preview my cursor. So for example here, you can see that I'm using the full preview cursor, which allows me to see the brush shape directly in the viewport. And I can change this. So for example, if I want to use a crosshair, I can do that. So if your brush looks different than mine, just make sure that you have the full preview cursor enabled. Now the next option I'm going to enable over here on the top toolbar is my symmetry option. So if I click this button, you'll see here that my object is divided in half. And now as I start to paint on one side, you can see the other side will update as well. So we're going to leave this symmetry option enabled. Now, another setting that I want to change here is going to be my flow. So you can see here it's set to a value of 50. I'd like to be able to build up this dirt effect. So I'm going to set the flow to be a pretty low value. Let's try about 10. So now I can start to paint. Now, one other thing that we're going to want to change quite often with our brush is the size of the brush. So instead of coming up here toward the top and changing the size slider, I can use a few keyboard shortcuts. So if I hold down the control key and use my right mouse button and move left to right, I can change the scale of the brush. Now, if you're holding down your control key and use your right mouse button and move up and down, you can control the hardness of the brush. So here I'm just going to set a size for my brush. And now I'm going to go in and just start to paint some information here. Now, as I paint over the stroke, I can start to, again, build up this dirt effect because I have such a low flow setting. Okay, so I'm going to go in and just start to add a little bit of dirt around here in the, in the wheel. Now, because I'm using symmetry, I know that the other side is being updated for me automatically. So I'll move my light over, and here I can see that that work is being done because of the symmetry option. Then we can just start to add just some of this dirt here to the wheel. I'm going to speed up the video. Here I'm just going to go over my strokes to build up this dirt effect, rotating the viewport and lighting so I can see what I am doing.
So now I've gone through and I've just added some dirt here to the wheel. Now I can also come over to my toolbar. You can see I have my brush, my paintbrush enabled. If I need to erase anything, of course I can use my eraser and then I can come in and just erase what I'm working on here. So here I will hit Control Z to undo and let's just go back here to my brush. I'm going to speed up the video once again. This time I'm going to paint dirt on the stopper and the bushings. I'm thinking about areas where the dirt would collect or with the stopper areas that would be scuffed. Take some time to play around with different brushes and experiment with the painting process. So now that I've finished adding dirt here to the wheels, stopper, and bushings, I want to talk a little bit more about the blending modes on a layer. So you'll notice here that I have my layer, and then over on the far right, I have a set of blending modes. So if I click this drop down, I have blending modes. These are all similar to blending modes and how they work in Photoshop in terms of adding blending modes to a layer. Now we also have an opacity slider as well. So for example, let's say that I paint and I feel like, you know, the, the overall look is just too intense. Well, I could just come over here and just drop the opacity down slightly if I need to. Now I could also change the blending mode. So let's come over here to our blending mode and let's set this to a multiply blending mode. Okay, so I think that's going to look a little bit better. And then what I might do is just walk this back just a bit by just decreasing the opacity slightly, maybe to a value of say 80. A special aspect of Painter is that you can paint using multiple properties of a material. For example, we set the material for our dirt to have color and roughness values. These properties are called channels. A layer can represent multiple channels, and each channel has its own set of blending modes and opacity. You can use this dropdown to target a specific channel in a layer. This will in turn allow you to set the blending mode or opacity for that given channel. Base color is selected by default, so setting our blending mode to multiply and opacity to 80 was done only for the paint strokes on the base color channel. So now let's take a look at painting stitching for the boot. So here in my texture sets, I'm going to make sure that I have the upper texture set selected. Once again, I'm going to come here to my layer stack and create a new layer. This is a paintable layer, and I'll call this stitching. Next, I'll come over to the asset in my libraries. I still have the brush category selected and I'm going to do a search for stitch. I'm going to be choosing this stitches straight tool. So single left click, you can see that it loads the brush parameters as well as a material. With this specific brush, I will be painting a full material, meaning that we have multiple channels enabled. Now for the base color, I'm simply just going to change this to a lighter value for the stitch. And here I can see the material preview update. Next, I'm going to zoom in on this area of the skate and let me use my control right mouse button towards the right to set the size of the brush. And now I can come in and start to paint the stitching. Here you can see that as I move my mouse, I'm actually creating the stitches. Here I'll hit control Z to undo that. And I'm going to come up here to my toolbar and enable this lazy mouse option. With lazy mouse enabled, the stroke will be delayed by the distance we have set here. So I'm just gonna set the distance down to around three. And this mode allows you to more precisely paint curved strokes. So now you can see that I can come into here and I can start to paint and I have more control over my stroke. And by using the stitch tool, I'm able to create the stitching as a full material on the boot. I have taken some time to paint stitching across the boot. In this video, we discuss the brush parameters and that a brush has a material where you can enable multiple channels to paint on. Take some time to further paint on the boot and experiment with this stitching tool. And when you're ready, join me in the next video.